there was a big, you know, storm here that, that I was out after 9 p.m. the other night. I heard and, that. And you know, below 57th Street. Right? Below 57th Street wow. for an Odd Lots event. And, you know, scheduled oh, to be kids. with us yesterday were Joe Weisenthal and Tracy Alloway. They closed the bar down at midnight. Sure. Why not? I couldn't make it yesterday. And it was such a, a, a randy performance there. Joe Weisenthal can't even attend today. No. He's, he's still at home. Yeah, yeah. Joining he's still us recovering. Home. Tracy yeah. Alloway here. And this was brilliant. And Tracy, I think it speaks to Odd Lots. And it was a packed room. And here's the key phrase of really, really smart people. Who was in that room? <laughs> what oh, kind gosh. of person? I mean, a lot of former Odd Lots guests. We had Don, Dan Wong, who's currently writing a book about the China and U.S. economy. Uh, we had a bunch of young traders. In fact, the winning team, I think, was put together uh, some people from Citadel, some from Wells Fargo. They were called short-term capital management. And they went home <laughs> with good. our first prize, which are... I'm quite excited about this and I kind of want to keep one for myself. But first prize was a vintage Pimco Outlook signed by Bill Gross himself. Very and cool. they each get one. <laughs> but but the, the firepower here speaks to global Wall Street in that we talked to all the muckety mucks in strategy and research. And that room and the Odd Lots supporters are the people really doing the work on Global Wall Street, the quant work, the I'll math tell work. you what, Tom, I will tell you, there is no way I could have gotten the answer to your third question. Tom's third question was insanely hard in his quiz round. <laughs> should, I, should I say what it is? Yeah, see if okay. Can. Okay. <laughs> okay. I think we can say it on radio. This is the question. In the old days, when trading a bond of 2043 at 5% priced at 98.275, a commission of three points is called no. a... Spread. No. That's the oh. spread. But what's it, called? it is the spread, but what's it called? Colloquial term. You can Ooh. say it on radio. I don't. You know what? Two teams got this answer at the event, and I was blown away. It's called a field goal. Field ah, goal. very Tom, like how do you know goal. that? I like that. I know yeah. it. I lived it. In the, in the history here, we got, we got to get to Tracy on what's going on in no, our that, lots, But That bought your vacation house. The field goal <laughs> bought your vacation house. <laughs> Don't go there. But, <laughs> but the, the, the answer is, folks, the new Wall Street. And Arthur oh, Levitt yep. had a lot to do with changing the new Wall Street. The revolutionary, you mentioned Bill Gross. I've had the privilege of talking to Bill Gross in, Pim in Newport Beach about his Monroe Trader. We had this little gray box to figure out duration and convexity, the dynamics of a given pricing of a bond. And one day, a guy named Michael Bloomberg with Tom yeah. Secunda oh, yeah, and, and like literally seven other employees showed up with a box that gave you convexity in the snap of a finger yeah. where you could interpolate and bring that in, and that took the field goal away. Yep. And all of a sudden, <laughs> oh. the two or three points on the trade was one and a quarter point on its way to what? I'm saying now, Nothing. if you're lucky, <laughs> if you make 0.25 on I it. Just, it just blows my mind that there was a time when you right. could earn a commission <clears throat> of three points. Like, right. Bid-esque spread. Yeah. Tell us about, and this goes to the boom in the market, and futures up three-tenths of a percent right now. The consumer boom has been there, and what you and Joe Weisenthal look at this week is the retail boom. How do you approach that? Yeah, so we're taking a close look at the secret art of retail site selection, so how businesses actually decide where to open up their shops. And it gets surprisingly granular. So, you know, things like, do I want to be on a corner where people are going to have to turn left to go into oh. the drive through uh, If I take up space in a shopping mall, are there co-tenancy agreements that restrict the other kind of businesses that I'm allowed to exist with? And the kind of surprising thing is that we are all used to talking about CR as um, just this terrible area at the moment. But of course, CRE is not a monolith. It is not just office buildings in downtown areas. It can also be suburban strip malls. Some of those seem to be doing absolutely fantastic yeah. at the moment. It can also be, by the way, multifamily. And I think this is an area where we are starting to see more concerns emerge given what's happening with a certain New York bank. Yes. And what I've, you know, I think over the last 10, 15 years, the, one of the retail themes has just been closing down excess department store, you know, shrinking the footprint of retail. But I think what we've learned over the last few years is a lot of retailers are saying, yeah, e-commerce is great, but I also have to have a physical presence and that omni-channel experience for retailers. Or maybe I look at it online, I buy it in the store, I buy it online, I pick it up at the store. 
So physical retail is still a thing. That's exactly it. So again, we're used to talking about the death of shopping malls, but yep. what we've seen over the past couple of years is actually a lot of businesses took up physical space. They all started doing you know point and click collection. If you're setting up a store where people are just going in to collect the items they've ordered online, then you have a whole new set of considerations. Maybe you don't wanna be in the middle of the mall. You wanna be on the outer ridges yep. for, for easier access. And so we are seeing what makes a physical physical site desirable starting to change.